I'll show you my poster. So um, Jennifer Platt is a doctorate of public health. And she and Beth Carrison started something called Tick-Borne Conditions United. It's a support group. And they put out a survey on to social media, emails, serve list, or list serves, I guess is what you call it. And then um, they had 2,122 people respond and 63% completed it. And the majority of the patients reacted to beef, 96%, 85% support. 59% to dairy, which is pretty high. I always say it's about 50%, but um, the gelatin surprised me how high that one was, 60, almost percent. And then um, the delayed reaction. So this is usually a four to six hour delay before they have symptoms. There are about 10% of people that do have immediate reactions. Um, I think often those are the ones that are fume reactive, which this is kind of a new thing that's not in publication. And so that's something that'll be important to emphasize, I guess, when we do publish. And then um, a lot of skin symptoms. So some patients get the usual like hives, but some people do this flushing, burning pain. It's, it's kind of a unique thing. And I think that goes to the autonomic nervous system. So some people um, I think are having mast cell symptoms that are also affecting the autonomic nervous system. And then about 37% had 15 or more reactions before they got diagnosed. And so this is usually a delay in getting diagnosis. And 25% still are reacting even though they're avoiding eating red meat. So they could be reacting to either fumes or cross-contamination. Yeah. It depends on their symptoms. So if it's the hives, then you usually do H1 antihistamine, sometimes H2. And then if it's full-blown anaphylaxis, epinephrine. But I usually tell patients, patients to avoid what they can and then have an action plan, almost like a peanut allergic yeah. kid. Yeah. And, um, and with those patients, where do you think that they have some like mass cell? Yeah, the ones that are still reacting, I think, have hyperactive mast cells, and that was actually a poster yesterday from St. Louis with alpha-gal associated with hyperactive mast cells. So they could potentially even need, like, multiple treatments, some for mast cells specifically. Correct, and, and so that's kind of what I've started doing is looking more at the mast cells type symptoms because that's a difficult to diagnose and difficult to treat. <laughs> um, like, sometimes mast cell stabilizers don't do a whole lot. So I was thinking there are, there's a a monoclonal that was in development for migraine against PCAP, and that's supposed to work to stop mass cell degranulation, which can be important for migraine. So I wonder if it would have any potential utility for things like other, other mass cell issue spaces. Yeah, Dr. Maybe. Brian Kim was talking about several different monoclonals that are coming down the pipe. Yeah. So that would be good. And I think they were initially meant for like mastocytosis. But if you have a patient who's having anaphylaxis on a regular basis, then they may benefit from that. With the um, like the different time to have a reaction, is it like you know if you just have a little bit of pork or beef, maybe you could have that longer latency, or is it not really like? Um, Dr. Platts Mills thinks it has to do with the fat content of the meat and the absorption into chylomicrons into the lymphatic system, and then I think it also has to do with the lymphocytes. Um, they usually take a few hours to wake up. Yeah, I have to find Alex. I don't want to over. Oh, okay. I need to see the tip Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, thank you so much. All right. <laughs> well, we've got three copies if you don't. <laughs>